hypothesis of music and how we internalize it being debunked or supported by studies currently reading the Romantic Manifesto. Unfortunately, my answer to that one is short. I don't know. Um, I don't know if it's being debunked or supported. I doubt, I, I haven't heard it's being debunked, but I, I don't think it's being supported either. I think that a lot more work needs to be done in the, I think, I think we have to do a lot more work in neuropsychology, the relationship between neuropsychology and our states of consciousness and the relationship between that and our senses and what music exactly does. And, and, uh, I, I think I think it's too early, so I, I don't think uh, that it's uh, that it's uh, being supported or debunked. I it makes sense to me, but that that should mean nothing to you. Um, you should read it. Everybody who hasn't read the Romantic Manifesto should read the Romantic Manifesto. So uh, Rand's hypothesis of music is fascinating. I'm not going to try to recreate it here because uh, I haven't read it in a while, and I don't want to dis- misrepresent it. It's fascinating. It's interesting. I think it's true, but I don't think it's been proved one way or the other. Uh, And I certainly don't think it's been debunked. So for those of you interested in in music, for those of you interested in music and kind of uh, 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 psychology or or psychopistemology or or the study of the brain, that would be a great field to go into. All right. Um, Okay, Tommy says, uh, will you be speaking with Sargon? Anytime soon, I've learned about you because of him. I, I don't expect to. I mean, I've spoken to him twice fairly recently, uh, so I don't. I don't expect to speak to him anytime soon again. Um, let me say that one of the things that is really been fun is as I travel around the world. It, it happened to me with two people in Hungary. Um, two people came up to me at my talk and said, I discovered you because of Dave, Dave, uh, uh, because of Dave Rubin, uh, or, uh, I discovered you because, oh, somebody had, had, list, had heard Alex Epstein first on Dave Rubin and then discovered me. So, uh, Dave Rubin has been a massive source, uh, for people to discover objectivism, discover me and then objectivism because of it. I got a, a, a tweet today on Twitter from a guy, I think in Canada who said that I had inspired him, I don't know how he discovered me, but I had inspired him to read Ayn Rand and he had just finished Anthem and he had tears streaming down his cheeks and now he's gonna go and read everything by Ayn Rand. So those are the, those are the great stories that, um, uh, you know, those are the great stories out there uh, that, that motivate me and keep me going. Um, Uh, let's see, what else? Uh, so Sargon, I, I'm sure I'll talk to him sometime. I don't think anytime soon. Um, uh, I, I'm hoping to do something with Dave Rubin in the summer, maybe maybe the longed for discussion with um, with Ben Shapiro, maybe somebody else, we'll see. We're, we're still discussing it, but hopefully we'll do something um, something with, uh, ben, with uh, Dave Rubin. But it really is amazing how many people have come to me and ultimately to objectivism because of uh, of uh, Dave Rubin. So so that is great. And of course, uh, we'll, we'll keep trying to have conversations uh, with uh, with lots of other people. Uh, somebody asked if uh, if I'm going to have the, the the philosopher who you don't remember his name on again. That was I think Greg Solomieri. And yeah, I'm sure to have Greg again. But what I'm probably going to do is I am going to every Sunday. When I'm in uh, Puerto Rico or when I'm home, I will somebody. And, and my goal is to interview objectivist intellectuals, people you don't know. Um, by the way, there's an excellent interview with Rajshri Agrawal. Rajshri Agrawal is another objectivist intellectual who came from India, again, not an American, who was just interviewed by Dave Rubin. So you can find it on the Rubin Report on YouTube. And she's excellent. She's a professor at the University of Maryland. Uh, so... My intention is to, over the next uh, few months, to interview a lot of objectivists, objectivist intellectuals you maybe don't know of or, or have not heard that much about. Psychologists, uh, I've got one neuroscientist that I'm hoping uh, to have on the show who's an objectivist, uh, philosophers. And of course, uh, I will, I, I think a lot of people enjoyed Greg Salamieri, so I will definitely have 
Uh, definitely have Greg Salamiri on the show uh, as well uh, in the future. So uh, expect to see, you know, I'm hoping that my show becomes a platform to introduce to you many of the objectives intellectuals that are out there because there's a lot of talent out there. There's a lot of good people out there that you might not know of. And, uh, you know, we had... Um, we had Brad Thompson on, we've had uh, Greg Salmieri on, we've had uh, Ilan Juno on, and I intend to have a lot more in the future. And, and people like the interview format. Not my favorite, but you guys seem to like it, so I will continue uh, continue to do those. Uh, oh, all right, Luca. Um, oh, five Swiss francs. All right, that's more than $5. Um, a little bit more, not that much more. All right. Um, Yuan, why do you seem to be so worried about nationalists like Orban and less so by the leftist collectivists like the ones running the EU in Brussels? Why do I think? For the same reason that Lena Peikoff in the dim hypothesis believes that, that the disintegrators are impotent in the long run, and the all the disintegration does is it leads to what he calls the misintegration, the theocrats on the right. And I think he's absolutely right. I view the right in the form of nationalism or religion, if often, often comes together in Eastern Europe, uh, the right uh, uh, that is, that is uh, um, nationalist and tribal, and, and uh, I would add uh, racist, is right now much more dangerous than the left. Not because if the left got into power, they wouldn't do horrible things. They would, but, it, but the left is limited by the fact that people don't want to be poor. People don't want to, people don't want to, to, to starve. Uh, it, you know, there's only one Venezuela today. There's only two other really communist regimes in the world, North Korea and uh, and Cuba. Uh, most of the world has figured out that it doesn't work. And, and they flirt with it, and then they change their minds. And they flirt with it, and then they change their minds. So you see it all over the place. I mean, Chile had a great run with free markets. They voted a couple of times for socialist and the socialists kind of made the poorest. So quickly, they, they corrected course and they voted for somebody more on the right. It's not that the person more on the right is going to give them less of a capitalism, but he's not going to make them quite as poor as the socialist would. Um, uh, Brazil uh, and Argentina for the last 20 years had, had leftist politicians that basically devastated their countries. Wham, they, they, they're switching to the right and reforming their economy and doing, doing good things. Now, will that sustain? No. You know, as soon as they get comfortable and they get feel guilty a little bit again, they'll they'll shift to the left. Um, the left is in power. That's my point. The left is in power, and life's not that bad. I, I know. I, you know. I hate to say that, right? But the left is in power, and the fact is, you Europeans are pretty rich. People in France and Germany and Scandinavia are not struggling. The, the you know, I, I I go to I go to Sweden and I go to Denmark and I see lots of BMWs and Mercedes Benzes and. And, and nice cars in the streets, uh, and, and people people seem fairly satisfied and happy and, and doing well. It, it, it's the, the, right now, I don't see the left in Europe as being um, so destructive as could to destroy what we have in Europe right now. But if they do, and, and I think it's going to, it happens in some places, then, then people won't tolerate it. And then the question is, what will replace it? And what would replace it is the right. And, and this, is, this is the point I think the Demi Party kind of makes. I'll, I'll, I'll put it in different words. People want meaning. People want meaning. People want purpose. People want to feel like they belong. And the right gives them that. The right gives them that. It gives them a cause. It gives them something to believe in. It gives them uh, a, a, a nice fuzzy feeling. Um, and I don't think the left does. I think the left. I think the left um, is um, 
you know, you can see it on American campuses right now, the whole free speech issue. I think, I think we won the free speech issue. I think the issue is going to slowly go away because they were defeated. The left was defeated. Um, the old left has risen up and said, you know, this, this, these attacks on free speech are ridiculous. You got to stop it. And you don't want to come back in a few years. But for now, look at Berkeley. Ben Shapiro spoke at Berkeley. We did a free speech event with uh, Dave Rubin in Berkeley. No problem. Um, yeah, I was stopped by Antifa and King's College. My guess is that ultimately King's College will, will establish itself on some kind of platform of free speech and bring speakers like me back. I don't think the left is sustainable. I don't think the left is, if you will, an equilibrium solution. It's too nihilistic. You see, the old left was because the old left believed in something. They believed in socialism and communism and a utopia of the proletarian. But the new left doesn't believe in anything. The new left just believes in destruction and tearing things down and destroying it in complete, complete um, disintegration and complete and complete nihilism. The new left is pure evil. You can't gain political power with pure evil. Look at what Obama, Obama, you know, looking back, Obama was not as damaging to America, as I think a lot of people think. He was really bad. He was really bad. And the backlash was such that even a candidate like Donald Trump got elected. So, because people don't want that. People resent that. People reject that. People want to believe in something. Why do people vote for Donald Trump? Because they want to make America great again. They want to have something to believe in. They want to have, they, they, they want to be able to dream about the greatness of America. They want to be patriotic. They, they want to have something good around them. So they buy into all the bullshit that is Donald Trump. But the reason they buy into it is because it's done in the name of a touchy-feely something that, that unites us all together and makes us feel good. So... I think the right, in that sense, is, 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 is more dangerous, more appealing, more attractive to most people. Most people are not nihilists. You've got, the left today is nihilists. Now, the left in, 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 in Brussels and in other places are just a bunch of power-lusting bureaucrats. They're not socialists. They just want to run your life because they like running your life. They're not even ideological. They don't believe in anything. And yeah, they're bad, they're horrible, I despise them. But, but what's the alternative? The alternative is Orban. Orban in Hungary has basically suspended free speech, not once in a while a demonstration at Berkeley, but there's no free speech. You try opening a newspaper in Hungary today. No, you're going to be shut down. There is no newspaper that can or will attack Orban all the ones that did are being shut down. There's no independent television. There's no independent media in Hungary. It's all gone. And what you're seeing is a rise in collectivism and in tribalism and the use of tribalism to protect power. Right? So the use of Muslim immigration, migration to Europe as, as an excuse to take away the rights of Hungarians. This is exactly what's going on. The excuse of painting uh, Soros, who is a bad guy. He's a leftist. He's a bad guy. He supports a lot of evil causes. He's not a good guy, right? But, but to paint Soros as the ultimate devil, a Jewish devil, by the way, which is important in Hungary, a Jewish devil, because it, it, it plays directly on anti-Semitism. But to portray him as a devil, just like, uh, just like Trump portrayed illegal immigrants as devils or the Chinese as a devil, it's all the same tactics. And by doing that, to anybody who gets money from Soros, and some people who get money in Hungary from Soros are not leftists, they're actually liberals in the classical sense because they're fighting for free press, which is something Soros supports in Hungary. Um, so it gets all confused. But... Orban is, he, he is destructive to our cause. He is destructive to the cause of liberty and he has a massive weapon in his hands and he will chop you down. The left can nip at us, but the real chopping is done by the right. 
Yeah, I think it is. So somebody's asking, is it okay to, to portray Trump or Orban as a devil? I don't think Trump is the devil. I don't think he's competent enough to be the devil. But Orban certainly is. Absolutely. There's nothing good about what Orban does. Hungary is a poor country. It's not coming out of poverty. It's completely subsidized by the European Union. So the, the Germans are subsidizing Hungary. There would be no economic growth if the European Union extracted its money from it. Nothing Urban does, nothing Urban does is good. So there's no free market in Hungary. It's not like he, he, he promotes capitalism, but yes, he oppresses free speech, but promotes capitalism, which may, maybe you can say about the Chinese government, but it's not even that. It's an every realm in which liberty is important. Urban, Urban crushes it. And he uses these scapegoats in order to do that. So Urban is like Putin, and there's nothing good you can say about Putin or Urban. Putin is probably better because he's probably more competent. Orban has stolen his family, his friends, his associates have stolen huge amounts of money from a poor country. Money that came in from Europe. Yeah, I mean, I don't care that George Soros is a Jew, but Orban does. Somebody's saying he doesn't care. Orban cares that George Soros is a Jew. And the Hungarians care that uh, George Soros is a Jew. And anti-Semitism is rising dramatically in Hungary and I think all across the world, the Western world, as a result of the rise of the alt-right. So yes, I think you can portray Orban as a devil, but uh, you know, George Soros is not that powerful. George Soros cannot stop me from speaking. Orban can. Orban can. So... Um, you know, uh, uh, if, if George Soros was president somewhere, then maybe I would call him the devil. Maybe then I would be very, very afraid of him. But, you know, he's like the Koch brothers on the left. He funds a lot of causes that, that, that are on the left, just like the Koch brothers fund a lot of libertarian and conservative causes. And, and he believes in it. And I've done a whole show on, on him. And you could, you could actually go and read some of his articles and read some of the things that he has written about capitalism. He is my, he is my enemy. He is my enemy. But the way he is portrayed is the same way the Rothschilds were portrayed. It's the same way evil Jewish bankers have always been portrayed. It's a, it's a way for the, for the right to latch on to the anti-Semitism that still exists in Europe. And Orban is part of that, part of that. And he uses that. And he uses the Islam question as well. The Muslim migration that happened in 2015, none of those Muslims wanted to stay in Hungary. None of those Muslims would have stayed in Hungary. Nobody wants to stay in Hungary. The Hungarians barely want to stay in Hungary. Half a million Hungarians have left just in the last few years. And these are very, very patriotic people who don't typically leave. But things are so bad in Hungary. There's such a shortage in jobs in Hungary. The future is so bleak in Hungary because of this prime minister that People are leaving, and yet he wins by a landslide because he's a demagogue and because, to some extent, he's rigged the way votes are counted. But, you know, and because he has tapped into this nationalist, xenophobic, anti-Semitic, you know, thread within Hungarians. By the way, I discovered that, that uh, while Urban was presenting himself as this, uh, he, no, no uh, Muslim... Migrants were gonna be, were gonna settle in Hungary, and he was gonna resist the calls of the European Union to do that. It turns out that he that he folded, and and uh, he accepted the allocation of uh, of Muslim migrants uh, to Hungary. It's about a thousand of them, and they are now have been uh, they have been uh, what do you call it uh, settled in Hungary quietly without letting anybody know. Uh, but they're there, he, you know, he, he, he plays both sides of this. He doesn't want to piss off the EU. Why doesn't he want to piss off the EU? Because it, without the EU, the economy of Hungary would be in the pits, completely in the pits. Right. right. Now, you know, are the left evil? Of course, the left of evil. I call them nihilistic. They're nihilists. They're destructive. All they want is to destroy. Ken is claiming I didn't say anything bad about the left. I mean, how stupid and ridiculous is that? I just did. I've been saying it all the time. But somebody asked me between the two. Okay, Sam asks, Ayn Rand said that conservatives, the self-proclaimed defenders of capitalism, are more damaging than the left. Is this still true today? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. The people who affiliate capitalism with religion the people who think capitalism is cronyism, the people who think capitalism is the same as the mixed economy, the people who think that, 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 that uh, capitalism 
uh, they don't know what capitalism is, but but pretend to defend capitalism and then attack free trade like like some conservatives are doing right now under Trumpism. The, the people who defend capitalism but hate immigrants, uh, the people who defend capitalism but want to limit legal immigration into the United States, even for people who have jobs, H-1B visa, these are the enemies of capitalism. And they're more damaging than the left because they undercut us. They chop us off at the knees. I can deal with the left. I know what they're trying to do. They're not on my side. Everybody knows they're my enemy. We can go head on with them. But the right's supposed to be my friends. But they're not. They're not. They're going after me constantly. All right. Now, I've talked about uh, migration into Europe, uh, mass migration into Europe, uh, in, and I've, I've expressed my, the fact that I don't believe uh, that is a good thing or that is something that should be allowed. But uh, to turn, uh, to turn uh, what's his name? Uh, now I've forgotten the prime, prime minister's name, Orban, into a hero because of that is absurd. Uh, I mean... Uh, that, that is, uh, the, the, the urban presenting himself as the savior of Western civilization is absurd. He wouldn't know Western civilization if bit him. It's like Trump claiming he knows what America is. Neither of them know what either one of those are. So urban is a fascist and uh, needs to be condemned as a fascist. Uh, I'm not for um, Muslims in mass emigrating into, uh, into uh, any country, but, uh, or mass migration into any country, certainly not of Muslims. But... I, I do believe in more migration. Yeah, I believe that uh, that uh, other than Muslims, if uh, Ukrainians want to move into Hungary or Poles want to move into Hungary, absolutely, they should be allowed without any restrictions. Yes, I think that would actually be a good thing. Um, and uh, there's actually no restrictions today to move within the, what's it called, the Schengen zone of Europe. Um, all right, I think we're done. But basically, to answer the I believe that the fascist or the the stick or the alt or the however you want to place the right, um, I believe the right is um, is 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 the real danger in the future. Just just as as uh, Leonard Peacock predicted, I think uh, nationalism combined with religion is probably the way it's going to go. It's probably the most dangerous thing we're facing in the West. I, I, if you look at if you look at Poland. If you look at Poland, if you look at Hungary, if you look at the latest elections in Austria, um, I think that that combination of nationalism and uh, and religion with a little sprinkle of racism uh, is going to be the death of the West. Uh, the left is is going to capitulate just like the left, um, because the left, as I said, doesn't believe in anything, doesn't believe in anything. The left to win has to believe in something. They won when they believed in communism. They don't believe in communism anymore. Uh, they believe in nihilism. They believe in, uh, what, what is Antifa? Antifa believes, Antifa define themselves as anarchists. That just means they don't believe in anything. That just means they believe in smashing and destroying and pulling things down. That will never win. Disintegration will never win. Nihilism will never win. So what's the alternative? The alternative, ideally, is capitalism, is freedom, is individual rights. But, uh, but you know, that, that is still not a dominant position anyway. I, I wish it was. So there are, uh, there are three options. There's uh, some form of collectivism on the right, some form of nihilism on the left, and capitalism. I am not on the right, I am not on the left. Left is nihilism, right is collectivism, um, and uh, I'm, I'm a capitalist. And I think that's what we need to fight for. And I don't think we need to make alliances with the right or make alliances with the left. And since so many of the people you listen to constantly attack the left, I take it upon myself to attack the right uh, and, and to make sure we differentiate between Donald Trump and Ayn Rand between uh, between Auburn and Ayn Rand, between the right and Ayn Rand. Right? So I want to make sure, I want to make sure, um, you know, 
I don't underestimate, uh, people say I'm underestimating the danger of the left. I don't underestimate the danger of the left. I hate the left. I despise the left. I confront the left every single day. I'm on university campuses. I interact with the left more than you do. The left is in the immediacy of the moment. The left is clearly more dangerous. The left is destructive. I keep saying it's destructive. That's what nihilism is. I don't get you people who think I don't criticize the left. I talk about, you know, in all my talks, my talks are all about capitalism and the enemy, which is statism, which primarily is practiced today on the left. So you know, it, it really is absurd, right? All right. Um, yeah, all right. So uh, I'm done. Uh, thanks everybody for listening. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'm on the cusp of 9,000 subscribers. I'm hoping by the end of May to get to 10,000. Uh, and the goal, of course, is 100,000. So tell your friends and get people to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Uh, those of you who did not support me on the chat with the super chat feature, uh, please go to uh, patreon.com or to paypal.me and support the Iran Brooks show on either one of those or both of those platforms. Uh, your support makes these shows possible and makes some of my speaking engagements possible. I don't get paid for a lot of the speaking I do. So to the extent that I continue to do this is going to depend on the financial support people like you uh, provide. Um, all right, we've gone for over an hour. I think that is enough. Uh, I appreciate your questions. I'll try to do another show like this from Tbilisi if I have time. Not sure what time of day that will be because I'm going one hour for the east. Have a great day. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for those who, who contributed on the Super Chat, and I will see you soon. Don't forget, by the way, to share, 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 share YouTube, share on Facebook, and when it goes up on Blog Talk Radio, share that as well. Bye, everybody.